purchased a brand new Dell computer recently that makes it capable of some amazing things. It has all the bells and whistles that I can use Excel programs and design complicated databases and top-notch brochures, except for I haven't done anything too amazing yet because I really don't know how to use it. I can turn it on and get my Word document and my email, but without some training, I'll never really be able to access my computer's fullest capacities. And the same thing is true of our spiritual life. The Apostle Peter tells us this in 2 Peter 1, when he says that God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. But we don't know how to tap into those tremendous resources that God has given us. I mean, how do we abide in his love? How do we let go of negative emotions and bad moods? How do we learn to feel more peaceful in the midst of a bad circumstance? And so I'd like to give you some specific ways on how to do that. And the very first thing I want to teach you is to externalize your negative emotions. Externalize your negative emotions. And what I mean by that is so often when we feel something, we over-identify with it. We say things like, I am so mad. I'm so hurt. I'm so frustrated. I'm so angry that this person stole my parking spot. And we get caught in that emotion. And so instead of saying it that way to yourself, I want you to say it different. I want you to say, I'm aware that I'm so mad. Try it. I'm aware that I am so mad. Do you hear a slight shift when you say it differently? When you say it this new way, now you have your feelings instead of your feelings having you. Our feelings are not who we are. I'm not anger. I just feel angry. And when I say I am angry, I'm identifying myself with that entire emotion. When I pull back and say I'm aware that I feel angry, now I'm aware of a part of me that's different than my emotions. And now I can decide what I want to do with those particular feelings. Now, this part may sound like a no-brainer, but in order to really let go of a negative emotion, you have to want to. You have to want to. Now, that may seem odd. Like, why would you want to hang on to something so awful as anger and bitterness and resentment for such a long time? But some of us do. We don't want to let go of it, or we don't know how. But sometimes we're just not willing because it's sort of become who we are. It's our rightful badge. We feel entitled. We feel justified. In fact, one woman who I was working with who had felt years of resentment toward her husband for some sins he committed early in their marriage, when I asked her, what do you get out of holding on to these for so long, she said, I get to be right. In fact, I get to punish him for the rest of his life. I get to feel sorry for myself. And if I give that up, I'm not exactly sure who to be anymore. I've always been intrigued by Jesus' question to the paralyzed man in John chapter 5. Here's a man who'd been paralyzed for 38 years, and he asks him a question. Do you want to get well? Why do you imagine Jesus asks this question to a man who'd been paralyzed for 38 years? Of course he'd want to get well, wouldn't he? But I think Jesus knew that healing was going to involve a lot of changes for this man. And he asked him if he really wanted to go there. Because you see, now if he was healed, he'd have to get a job like everybody else. He wouldn't just be able to beg. He'd have to talk to people face to face instead of always being dependent and seen as a cripple. I believe that God longs to heal in you and me. But our choice is often involved because healing involves new changes and new challenges.